Hey everybody, welcome back Chemistry Kids. I'm going to talk to you today about molarity. This is actually a really, really important concept in chemistry. Um, it determines like how concentrated things are, helps us to calculate stuff for that if we need to make specific solutions. Uh, every time that we've done a demonstration in class, or we had an experiment where you had a liquid, those things kind of need a specific concentration. Molarity, that's how we do that in chemistry. That's how chemists do that. Uh, so we're going to look at that today, um, and specifically what does that mean, and how do we visualize that? Because I think if you can visualize what molarity means, I really think that it will make, when we get to the calculation stuff, I think it'll make that easier. It will make it a little bit more meaningful. It'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, so to help us with that, first off, we want to look at what is molarity. Okay, Molarity is simply our way of talking about concentration. So what is molarity? Molarity is moles of solute or moles of things that are dissolved divided by your liters of solution. And now this is like saying, okay, how much stuff was dissolved? That's the moles. And then the liters, this is actually talking about a total volume. Now, i got to be careful here. Okay, a really common misconception is that when you're doing the volume part of it, you just take your crystals, put them in your container, and then you add, like for example, if you need one liter of liquid, one liter of solution, you take your crystals, put them in your container, and you add one liter of water to that. The problem with that is that the crystals themselves take up space. The things that you are dissolving, they don't just go away. They appear to dis go away and disappear, but they're really still there, and they take up space. All those particles take up room. And so for the volume, it's actually the total volume. It's actually really hard to figure out exactly how much liquid you're supposed to add by doing a calculation. What you actually have to do is you add your crystals to your container, and then you fill it up with enough liquid until you hit the volume mark that you need. Okay, so what does that look like? All right. So to help us with that, we are gonna utilize the use of a friend chemistry, um, Mr. Chemaid, okay, Kool-Aid Chemaid. So what we're going to look at is what does molarity mean? Just think in terms of like Kool-Aid or soda or pop or whatever, any sort of beverage that you would consume. And so we're looking at first off, what does one point zero M for molarity, or we call it molar, what does 1.0 molar of chem aid mean? Okay, so we have an empty container right now. Okay, this is empty. Nothing's in here. Okay, and there's no Kool-Aid in there. So what does 1.0 molar mean? Well, look at the equation. If your number for M was 1, what that means is you have a ratio that says if, and that's a key word, if you have 1 liter of solution or liquid, there would be 1 mole, 1 mole of particles in there. Well, you got to remember, what does the word mole mean? The word mole actually just represents that number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, it's going to be atoms sometimes, it's going to be molecules sometimes if your particles are made of multiple atoms, kind of like Kool Aid is. Kool Aid is mostly just sugar, and sugar is made out of multiple different atoms stuck together. So if we have a one molar solution of Kool Aid, then what that means is you actually have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Kool-Aid particles dissolved for every one liter. Now notice I keep saying for every or if we had one liter. 
Okay, so that's going to be a key thing. So let's just say this is one liter container. Okay, and what we do is we have our chemistry Kool Aid, our Chem Aid packet, and that is holding one mole of particles. Now, for us, to make it a little easier to see, I already drew some particles in here. Now, what's important for you to realize is there are 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so what that means for us is that one mole is going to mean 10 particles. Okay, one mole is 10 particles. So, what we do, is if we're going to make a one molar solution, we would tear open our Kool-Aid packet, we pour that into our container, and then we would fill it up with enough water so that we are making one liter of liquid. Now, we actually don't know how much liquid is in there, but we do know that the liquid plus the solute, the total volume, the solute, in this case, the solute is our crystals of powder that we are dissolving, plus the solvent, which in this case is going to be water. The solute plus the water put together is one liter. Now, how many particles are floating around right now in our container? We have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. How am I showing that? Remember? One mole, 10 particles. So I need to draw 10 particles in my container. This is a one molar solution of chemade. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they're all mixed in there. Okay? I'm going to call this 1.0 molar. M for molarity, or what we would call it molar as an abbreviation. Okay, so that's what molarity basically means. That's just kind of a general thing. What if that number for molarity changes? Okay, what, <clears throat> what if we have two liters of that? So instead of having a one liter container, we have a two liter container. Okay, but it's still... the same concentration, 1.0 molarity or molar. What does that mean? Well, think about that. If I needed one packet of our chem aid to make one liter of one molar solution, how many packets would I need to make two liters if it's the same concentration? Two packets. Okay, now think about that. Why would that have to be true? Why would I need two packets for this one rather than one? Okay, put this one over here. And again, when I say one mole equals 10 P, that means 10 particles, P for particles. Why do I need two packets? Well, think of the equation, okay? The equation is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. This is a one molar solution because I have one mole of solute dissolved in a total of one liter. Well, what is one divided by one? It's one. So this question is really asking, what if we took this number for L and we cranked it up to two, all right? What if, we, what if we did that? So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, instead, 
of having 1.0 molarity being one mole over one liter, we still know it's 1.0 molarity with the questions asking, if we have two liters, how many moles would we need? What number divided by two gives you one? Two. And that's why we need two of our packets. Now think about what that would look like in your solution. Okay? Your solution would have how many particles? Technically, two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. But we said one mole of particles is 10 dots. So how many particles do I need to draw in here? I need to draw 20. Okay, so I have two liters of solution now, and in this there are 20 particles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now the key here is if you looked at this, the spacing between the particles is pretty similar. And the reason is, is because you have the same amount of particles for the same amount of volume. If I were to cut this in half, how many particles would be in that half? It should be 10, because the concentration is the same. Okay, <clears throat> well, let's take it one step further. What if instead of having two liters, think of a two liter bottle of pop there too, if you're thinking in size. What if we only had a half a liter? Okay, so what if we're saying here, okay, we, we know, use black, we know we had 1.0 molarity solution, and we said that's because we had one mole of solute over one liter, now we still have the same concentration, but instead of having one liter, now we're down to 0 0.5 liters. Okay, so this is 0 0.5 liters, but we want it to still have the same concentration, 1.0 molarity. Well, how many moles would you have in there? Again, look at, the, look at the equation. The equation is saying your molarity has to be moles divided by liters. What number divided by 0.5 is going to give you 1? Got to be the same number. Okay, so we know that this must be 0.5 moles. What does that mean for our chem, our chem packet, our Kool-Aid, our chem -Aid? Instead of having one of these, we need a half. We only need to take half of our chemical Kool-Aid and pour it in to our container. So instead of having 10 particles, how many particles should this one have in it? Well, there's a half a mole in there. So half of 10 particles would be five. So it's filled up. It's got our half a liter. But I only now have five particles floating around in there. Okay, so that's what molarity means. Now, 